Hello students. Uh, in today's class, we are going to discuss the poem Daddy by Sylvia Plath. In our previous lecture, we have already discussed about some of her technical uh, uh, techniques of writing poems. And today we are going to see the poem Daddy here in this lesson, in today's lesson. And we will discuss and analyze the poem. Now, Sylvia Plath, as we know, is most commonly known for her tortured soul. Perhaps that is why readers identify with her works of poetry so well, such as Daddy. She has an uncanny ability to give meaningful words to some of the most inexpressible emotions. She writes in a way that allows the reader to feel her pain. In this poem, Daddy, she writes about her father after his death. This is not a typical uh, obituary poem that we see, which is obviously about lamenting the loss of the loved ones, wishing for his return or hoping to see him again. Rather, in this poem, Plath feels a sense of relief at his departure from her life. She ex uh, explores the reason behind this feeling in the lines of this poem. Now, as we had seen in the poem already, that uh, she has written not about the lamentation, but about her happiness. She has expressed her happiness. Now, we will do the uh, stanza-wise analysis of the poem. So, when you see the first stanza, we find that in the first stanza of Daddy, the speaker reveals that the subject of whom she speaks is no longer there. This is why she says and repeats, you do not, you do not. The following lines, uh, line is rather surprising as it does not express loss or sadness. On the contrary, we find that it begins to reveal the nature of this particular father-daughter relationship. The speaker compares her father to a black shoe. It seems like a strange comparison until the third line reveals that the speaker herself has felt like a foot that has been forced to live 30 years in that shoe. The foot is poor and white because for 30 years it has been suffocated by the shoe and never allowed to see the light of the day. The first line in the stanza reveals that the speaker felt not only suffocated by her father but fearful of uh, she was fearful of him as well. In fact she expresses that her fear of him was so intense that she was afraid to even breathe or sneeze in front of father. Now moving on to second stanza we see that in the second stanza of daddy the speaker reveals her own personal desire to kill her father which is very unusual. So the first stanza uh, the first line states I have had to kill you and in the next line uh, which goes on to explain that the speaker actually did not have time to kill her father because he died before she could manage to do it that means before she could kill her father her father was dead she does not make this confession regretfully or sorrowfully rather she calls him a bag full of god which suggests that her view of her father as well as her view of god was one of fear and trepidation. She describes him as a ghastly statue with one grey toe, big as Frisco seal. Her description of her father as a statue suggests that she saw no capacity of failing in her father. A Frisco seal refers to one of the sea lions that can be seen in San Francisco 
and when she describes that one of his toes is as big as a seal it reveals to the reader just how enormous and overbearing her father seemed to her he has or he was hardened without feeling and now that he is dead dead she thinks he looks like an enormous ominous statue or he has become lifeless and moving on to third stanza here looking at her dead father the speaker describes the gorgeous scenery of atlantic ocean and the beautiful area of nosset however she also uses the word freakish to preach her descriptions of the beautiful atlantic ocean this reveals that even though her father may have been a beautiful specimen of human being she knew personally that there was something awful about him in the final two lines of this stanza the speaker reveals that at one point during her father's sickness she uh, she even prayed that he would recover the last line of this stanza is the german phrase for o u now moving on to the fourth stanza we see uh, that the speaker begins to wonder about her father and his origins the speaker knows that he came from a polish town that is a town in poland where german was the main language spoken or german was the main spoken language she explains that the town he grew up in had endured one war after another she could never be able to identify which specific town he was from because the name of his hometown was a common name this stanza ends mid sentence and the speaker begins to explain that she learned something about her polak friend and in stanza 5 we see that the speaker finishes what she began to explain in the previous stanza by explaining that she learned from a friend that the name of the polish town her father came from was a very common name for this reason she concludes that she could never tell where he puts his foot it's clear she will never she will not ever be able to know exactly where his roots are from she had never asked him because she could never talk to him after this the speaker then explains that she was afraid to talk to him why she was not able to talk to her father it's not that she was not willing she was always willing to talk to her father but she was always scared afraid of her father she states the tongue stuck in my jaw when explaining the way she felt when she actually wanted to talk to her father that means she never had the or she never could gather the courage to talk to her father and in stanza 6 we see that she continues to describe the way she felt around her father she felt as though her tongue was stuck in barbed wire itch is the german word for i this reveals that whenever she wanted to speak to her father she could only utter and sh- say i i i she then describes that she thought every german man was her father this reveals that she does not uh, distinguish him as someone familiar and close to her rather she sees him as she sees any other german man harsh and obscene and in stanza 7 of daddy we see the speaker begins to reveal to the readers that she felt like a jew under the reign of a german father this is a very strong comparison and the speaker knows 
this and yet does not hesitate to use this simile the oppression which she had uh, she, she has suffered under the reign of her father is souls something she feels compares to the oppression of jews under the germans in holocaust so for this reason she specifically mentions as which among other concentration camps it was the concentration camps uh, camp uh, where the jews were kept and where they were killed so she then concludes that she began to talk like a jew like one who uh, who was oppressed and silenced by german oppressors then she concludes that because uh, because she feels the oppression that jews feel she identifies with the jews and therefore considers herself jew in stanza 8 we see the speaker here continues to criticize the germans as she compares the snows of tyrol and the clear beer of vienna to the germans ideal of racial purity german always appreciated or they always had this feeling for the racial purity so she concludes that they are not very pure or true then the speaker considers her ancestry and the gypsies that were part of her heritage gypsies like jews were singled out of execution of the nazis and so the speaker identifies not only with jews but also with gypsies in fact she seems to identify with anyone who has ever felt oppressed by germans in the last line of the stanza the speaker suggests that she is probably part jewish and part gypsy and moving on to stanza 9 we see the speaker finally finds the courage to address her father now that he is dead she admits that she has always been afraid of him she implies that her father had something to do with the air force as that is now or as that is how the word luft wef translates to english gobbled gobbledy gook however is simply gibberish this implies that the speaker feels that that her father and his language made no sense to her in this instance she felt afraid of him and feared everything about her father she never was able to understand him and she was always uh, he was always someone to fear that means she was always afraid of her father she was afraid of his neat mustache and his aryan eye bright blue uh, aryan obviously uh, this description of his eyes implies that he was one of those germans whom the nazis believed to be a superior race he was aryan with blue eyes which is obviously considered to be the mark of or the uh, the identity of a higher race or racial purity of the aryans he was something fierce and terrifying to the speaker and she associates him closely with the nazis a panzer man was a german tank driver and so this continues the comparison between her father and a nazi moving on to stanza 10 we see that in this stanza the speaker compares her father to god she clearly sees god as an omnius overbearing being who clouds her world this is why she describes her father as a giant black swastika that covered the entire sky the third line of the stanza begins a sarcastic description of women 
and men like her father she mockingly says every woman adores a fascist and then begins to describe the violence of men like her father she calls uses the word brute three times in the last two lines of the stanza in this uh, if these lines are not written in jest then she clearly believes that women for some reason or another tend to fall in love with violent brutes and in uh, stanza 11 we see that the first line of the stanza uh, describes her father as a teacher standing at the blackboard the author's father was in fact a professor this is how the speaker views her father she can see the cleft in his chin as she imagines him standing there at the blackboard then she describes that the cleft that is in his chin should really be in his foot this simply means that she views her father as the devil himself now the devil is often uh, characterized as an animal with cleft feet and the speaker believes he wears his cleft in his chin rather than in his feet her description of her father as a black man does not refer to the skin color or his uh, the color of skin but rather to the darkness of his soul this stanza ends with the two word who because the author breaks the stanza mid sentence in the middle of the sentence now in the 12th stanza we see that the first line of the stanza refers or like speaker finishes her sentence and reveals that her father has broken her heart and she says that he has bit pretty red heart in two that is bit her pretty red heart into two the rest of the stanza reveals a deeper understanding of the speaker's relationship with his uh, with her father even though he was a cruel of bearing brute at one point in her life she loved him dearly it is possible that uh, as a child she was able to love him despite his cruelty and as an adult however she cannot see past his vices that means now as she has grown up she is able to see the vices that she uh, that he has her father has now this stanza reveals that the speaker was only 10 years old when her father died and that she mourned for her uh, for him until she was 20 she even tried to end her life in order to see him again she thought that even if she was never to see him again in an afterlife to simply have her bones buried by his bones would be enough to uh, be enough of a comfort to her or will be enough to comfort her now in stanza 13 we see that in this stanza uh, the speaker reveals that she was not able to commit suicide even though she tried she reveals that she was found and pulled out of sack and stuck back together with glue at this point the speaker experienced a revelation she realized that she must recreate her father she decides to find and love a man who reminded her of her father freud's theory of the oedipus complex seems to come into play here when we just try to analyze the poem here it is the freud's theory of oedipus complex that we find in these lines now the theory that girls fall in love with their father or their fathers as children and boys with their mothers also suggests that these boys and girls grow up to find husbands and wives that resemble their fathers and mother the speaker has already suggested that women love a brutal men and perhaps she is now confessing uh, confessing that she was once such a woman 
This is why the speaker says that she finds a model of her father who is a man in black with a Menkampf look. While Menkampf means my struggle. So the last line of this stanza most likely means that the man she found to marry looked like her father and like Hitler. And Mekam is a book or a biography uh, or a biography, uh, by, uh, autobiography written by Hitler. Autobiography. Now in stanza 14, we see that uh, the speaker reveals that the men she married enjoyed, enjoyed to torture. This is why she describes him as having a love of the rack and the screw. She confesses that she married him when she says, and I said, I do, I do. Then she tells her father that she is through. This means that having recreated her father by marrying a harsh German man, she no longer needed to mourn her father's death. She then describes her relationship with her father as a phone call. Now she has hung up and the call is forever ended. That means the relation with the father has ended forever. Now moving on to stanza 15, we see that in this stanza of daddy, the speaker reminds uh, the reader that she has already claimed to have killed her father. She revealed that he actually died before she could get to him. But she still claims the responsibility for his death. Now, she says that if she has killed one man, she has killed two. This is most likely in reference to her husband. She refers to her husband as a vampire who was supposed to be just like her father. As it turned out, he was not just like her father. In fact, he drained the life from her. So this is why she refers to him as a vampire who drank her blood, who sucked her life out of her. Now it is not clear why she first says that he drank her blood for a year. However, the speaker then changes her mind and says seven years if you want to know. When the speaker says, Daddy, you can lie back now, she is telling him that the part of him that has lived on within her can die now too. That means she has kept her father alive inside her. Now he can die. And now in stanza 16, we find the speaker revealing that her father, though dead, has somehow lived on like a vampire to torture her. It is claimed that she must kill her father the way that a vampire must be, must be killed with a stake to the heart. She then goes on to explain to her father that the villagers never liked you. She explains that they dance and stomp on his grave. The speaker says that the villagers always knew it was him. This suggests that the people around him always suspected that there are something different and mysterious about her father. So with the final line, the speaker tells her father that she is through with him while he has been dead for years. It is clear that her memory of him has caused her great grief and struggle. So the speaker was unable to move on without acknowledging that her father was in fact a brute. Once she was able to come to terms with what he truly was. But now she was unable and she was able to let him stop torturing her from the grave. So this is the stanza wise explanation of the poem and in tom tomorrow's class we will discuss the analysis of the poem.
थैंक यू ऑल